This video is on bronchiectasis. Bronchiectasis is the chronic infection of the bronchi and bronchioles, leading to permanent dilatation of these airways. So bronchiectasis, bronchi and ectasis. Ectasis means there is dilatation. So the main organisms that cause bronchiectasis are Haemophilus influenza, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and also other organisms. For causes of bronchiectasis, it can be due to congenital causes, for example, cystic fibrosis and other diseases. It can also be due to post-infection like measles, pertussis, bronchiolitis, pneumonia, TB and also HIV. There are also other causes which include bronchial obstruction, can be due to tumour or foreign body, ABPA which is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, causing this bronchiectasis where there is permanent dilatation of the airways after chronic infection. And also other diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and some cases are known to be idiopathic where they do not know the cause. Clinical features of bronchiectasis, the patient may complain of symptoms like persistent coughing, sputum where it is copious and purulent in nature, and also intermittent hemoptysis where there is coughing out of blood. Some signs that we can look out for are finger clubbing and when we do respiratory examination, we can auscultate the lungs for any coarse inspiratory crepitations which indicates bronchiectasis and also listen for wheezing. Other clinical features may be due to complications such as pneumonia, pleural effusion where there will be dull on percussion of the chest, pneumothorax, resonant non-percussion, hemoptysis, cerebral abscess, and also amyloidosis are some of the complications of bronchiectasis. To investigate for bronchiectasis, we do sputum culture if the patient complains of having sputum. We do culture and sensitivity to look out for the causative organism so we can do targeted treatment. Chest x-ray the typical finding in bronchiectasis, we have to look out for any cystic shadows and thickened bronchial walls, which will be shown with tremline and ring shadows. This picture over here shows a chest x-ray with tremline shadows. You can see pointed by the arrows. We should also do HRCT of the chest to assess the extent and distribution of the disease. Spirometry can be done and it often shows an obstructive pattern. We should also assess the reversibility. Bronchoscopy to look at the site of hemoptysis if there is any, and also to exclude obstruction and obtain samples for culture. And these are some of the other tests I have listed over here where we can do as well. For treatment of bronchiectasis, postural drainage should be performed twice daily. Chest facial therapy can help in expectoration of the sputum and also drainage of the mucus. Antibiotics should be prescribed according to the bacterial sensitivities after the culture results are out. For example, if the patient is more severe where there are three or more exacerbations a year, we should consider long-term antibiotics. Moving on to bronchodilators, it may be useful in patients, especially those with asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, or ABPA, the aspergillus cyst just now. Corticosteroids like prednisolone, especially for ABPA, for the allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Surgery is one of the options as well. It might be indicated in disease which are localized or to control severe hemoptysis. That's all for this video. Thank you.